Hello and welcome back to the channel. Uh, as promised in the previous video, uh, I am making this uh, second part on neurotransmission. Right. So in this part, uh, in this part of the video, uh, we would discuss about uh, the process of uh, neurotransmission. Right. How this neurotransmission process is taking place. Right. So all the steps. So before moving further, uh, there are several important things that we uh, I think need to understand first like what are neurotransmitters next term we encounter will be synapse synapses can be of two types they can either be electrical or they can be chemical uh, we are uh, we would be discussing only chemical synapses in detail in this video Third term, EPSP, that is excitatory postsynaptic potential. Uh, and second would be IPSP. Uh, IP is similar, but that would be inhibitory post synaptic potential and when we talk about synapse right if we talk about synapse then with synapse we will encounter two terms for example this is our synapse so anything that is before synapse will be pre synaptic and anything that is after synapse will be post synaptic right so there would be pre synaptic neurons and post synaptic neurons so uh, now let me tell you what are uh, these terms in brief neurotransmitters when we talk about neurotransmitters so neurotransmitters these are chemical substances these are chemical substances that play a role in transmitting the messages transmitting the messages right when we talked about uh, in the previous video when we were discussing about neurotransmission neurotransmission was like it was the process where communication between the neurons right communication between neurons was happening or between neurons and effectors if we see their example we can have acetylcholine we have histamine also acts at in some places we have 5-HT 5-hydroxytryptamine or commonly called as serotonin and there are several other substances that function as uh, neurotransmitters right now we would discuss uh, everything in detail so let me first show for example this is a neuron and what it will be doing it will be receiving impulse from somewhere and through this part it would be transmitting the impulse to this neuron So these are the dendrites, you know, these are the dendrites, both of these are dendrites. This is the axon, this is the axon, these are the terminal ends. So what will happen, like first neuron, this neuron 1 will receive the signals through its dendrites, it will process, it will conduct and then it will transmit the signal through the help of a chemical. Uh, to this axon uh, to this uh, second neuron right so now we will take this arrangement into consideration right so i would be taking only this arrangement into the consideration right so and when we talk about synapse i spoke initially that they are of two types they can be electrical 
or they can be chemical electrical in electrical synapses what is there like there are now both of these cells will be connected with the help of connections i think we remember the gap junctions if we have studied cell junctions so these are the connections they are not connection the word is connection connection right so what they do there is direct inflow of ions from this cell 1 to cell 2 and there is uh, transmission of the impulse this is presynaptic and this neuron is post synaptic right and this gap here this is called as synapse this gap is uh, not much this is approximately 22 40 nanometers right 1 nanometer equals to 10 to the power minus 9 meters so this is a very small gap for diagrammatic purpose we are seeing it as a large gap, right so uh, there are several steps that are involved in the process of neurotransmission right now we will see uh, every step uh, one at a time right so in the previous video uh, we had seen like there is arrival of nerve impulse or how nerve impulse travels right so a nerve impulse will travel through the neuron so uh, what i have drawn here is uh, i think that would be more easy to understand like these are our sodium channels right we have seen in the previous video like sodium channels were responsible for the depolarization of the cell so when there would be influx of sodium ions inside the cell there would be depolarization and hence the nerve conduction will take place right so the impulse will travel forward right when there is depolarization right when there is a uh, depolarization so in the very first step what is happening uh, there would be a nerve impulse uh, that would arrive at the synaptic end right so nerve impulse will travel and it will arrive here so this is impulse i so it will arrive at the uh, synaptic end bulb of the presynaptic neuron right so this is our this is our presynaptic neuron so nerve impulse is coming and it is arriving here and when this nerve impulse arrives so due to this due to arrival of this nerve impulse these calcium channels these are voltage sensitive right these are voltage sensitive channels so what is happening when sodium is coming inside a cell there is depolarization and this depolarization if we remember like the previous diagram there something was this was happening right so this was the millivolts and this was the time this was minus 70 this was zero this was plus 30 so what was happening this was there was change in the uh, voltage right from minus 70 to it was going to 30 plus 30 so now what will happen in response to this voltage change and since these calcium channels these are voltage sensitive what will happen these calcium channels will open when and when these calcium channels will open they will allow the influx of calcium ion inside the cell right what will happen these calcium ions will come inside the cell because there is high concentration of calcium already in the extracellular fluid so then what will happen uh, these voltage gated calcium channels they will open they are present on the uh, membrane of the synaptic end bulbs and now more calcium will enter inside the cell right since at the resting condition the concentration of calcium in the cell is low but when these calcium channels open the concentration of these this calcium increases inside the cell right the concentration of calcium has increased inside the cell and this increased concentration of the calcium it acts as a trigger right this increased concentration of the calcium it acts as a trigger for the exocytosis of the neurotransmitter i'm sorry i didn't mentioned it here right so these are the synaptic vesicles and they store neurotransmitter right they store the neurotransmitter so this increased concentration of calcium right so this high concentration this high concentration of calcium this opening of calcium channel influx of calcium and this high concentration of calcium acts as a trigger 
for this synaptic vesicles to undergo exocytosis right so if i draw it like this so there would be exocytosis here this synaptic vesicle will come and it will fuse with the plasma membrane and when this fuses with plasma membrane this neurotransmitter will be released in the synaptic cleft now the next step is binding of the neurotransmitter to, to the receptor if we see what are receptors receptors are cellular macromolecules that provide uh, any agonist or any neurotransmitter or any molecule to bind to it and then these receptors uh, allow the bound uh, the bound neurotransmitter to generate uh, or to produce any change in the cell on which it is present so now what will happen this neurotransmitter it will come and bind to the receptor right it will bind to the receptor and these receptors uh, these receptors can be any receptors but what i am showing here they are they are ligand gated ion channels here they are sodium channels they are also called as inotropic receptors right they are also called as inotropic receptors so now what happens when it binds to when the ligand binds with this receptor in the next step these channels open right these channels open and when these channels open since the concentration of sodium is high in the extracellular fluid this sodium flows in the cell this sodium flows in the cells so sodium is rapidly flowing inside the cell and when sodium flows in the cell then i think i have to point out to this okay, when sodium flows inside the cell there is the process of this if you remember this process this is the depolarization process there is depolarization right one more thing i would uh, I have to emphasize here is like there is always not the case that there will be depolarization. There are chances that there can be hyperpolarization. This was polarized state, polarized was minus 70. If it goes to minus 100, it leads to hyperpolarization. Hyperpolarization is a state like where our cell goes into a state of too much of uh, potential differences, right? So there would be uh, the inside of the cell becomes very negative. And how uh, the inside of cell can become negative? There are several reasons, but uh, the example that I am taking here, like these receptors, in this case, I have showed that they are the sodium channels, but if they were chloride ion channels or if they were potassium ion channels, then they would have led to hyperpolarization due to generation of EPSP. EPSP is your excitatory postsynaptic potential. That means okay, whenever there is generation of EPSP, right? Whenever there would be generation of your EPSP, excitatory postsynaptic potential, this will lead to depolarization. And whenever there is generation of IPSP, inhibitory postsynaptic potential, this will lead to hyperpolarization. So when there is EPSP it leads to depolarization and the nerve impulse is conducted like in the previous uh, examples that we seen that uh, there is increased sodium concentration so everywhere here are our sodium ion channels and they will keep on opening and the impulse will uh, travel to the postsynaptic neuron and so on to the uh, finally ultimately to the effector and if there is IPSP right if there is a uh, generation of IPSP inhibitory postsynaptic potential EPSP or IPSP depends on the nature of the neurotransmitter that has been released. If the neurotransmitter is excitatory, it produces EPSP and if it is inhibitory in nature, it produces IPSP, right? So when it produces IPSP, what happens? Either there will be opening of chloride ion channels here. Instead of uh, these sodium ion channels, there will be opening of chloride ion channels and uh, when chloride will come, then this membrane potential will go even more down. This will lead to hyperpolarization. Or there are chances uh, that there can be 
there can be potassium channels there can be potassium channels so what will happen this potassium channel will lead to efflux of potassium because the concentration of potassium is inside is higher inside the cell and in the synaptic left uh, sorry uh, not in the synaptic left uh, in the extracellular space the concentration of potassium is less in comparison to the uh, concentration of potassium inside the cell and when uh, potassium will leave the cell so, uh, so what will happen uh, this potassium is positively charged so the charge inside the cell will start to fall down and this will also lead to hyperpolarization right so uh, there will be generation of EPSP or IPSP so we have covered these two points as well and ultimately there will be termination of neurotransmitter action so how a neurotransmitter will be terminated our neurotransmitter they can be removed in two ways either by enzymatic destruction or they can be reuptaken so what we had seen is like this was our synapse right so our neurotransmitter was bound to these receptors right neurotransmitter had came in bound to these receptors now there can be two chances first is like enzymatic so our neurotransmitter for example we take acetylcholine so there are enzyme known as acetylcholine esterase esterase what they do they split this acetylcholine into acetic acid plus choline so this renders acetylcholine non-functional our neurons the presynaptic neurons they have pumps so what happens what uh, what these pumps can do right for example this is the pump this is NET norepinephrine reuptaker so what happens if the neurotransmitter norepinephrine what it does it reuptakes it back into the presynaptic neuron right there is a reuptake of uh, neurotransmitter in the presynaptic neuron so this neurotransmitter is not degraded you know, right in this case this neurotransmitter is not being degraded it is reuptaken there but ultimately the neurotransmitter is uh, removed from the uh, site uh, for the receptor binding site from where it was bound to the receptor now it is being removed right and uh, hence uh, this is the complete process of uh, neurotransmission happy learning to all of us thank you very much